Good evening, friends. Welcome to Elevate 2021. My name is Jake Yates. I will be your host and MC for this night's event, and I'm excited to have you with us. Tonight, we'll be hearing from all of our top 30, under 40 winners, our judges, our sponsors will be able to celebrate, and we're glad to have you here. If you hadn't thought about staying the entire time, change your plans. Get comfy, grab a drink, put a pizza in the oven, whatever you're gonna do, and let's hang out. Tonight, we're gonna hear first from KCYP's very own president, Dr. Ryan Bones. Thank you, Jake. We appreciate you very much. And we appreciate all of you for being here with us this evening. Yes, I am Dr. Ryan Bones, president of KCYP. And while I sincerely wish we could be in person with you as we have the last three years of Elevate, it's been quite the year of adaptation. And so we're coming to you live through your living room. We are very, very grateful for all of the people who helped make tonight possible. This has been being planned as an event since April with our co-chairs, Shane Salorza and Caleb I, and the entire Elevate committee. When December rolled around and the restrictions came out, we had to make a pivot. And so we are here. We've had a lot of people behind the scenes working hard to make tonight possible. We want to thank Chris and Tyann at Bjorkman Film Studios for all of their incredible hard work to make us all look so good. And we also want to thank all of our amazing sponsors. First up, our incredible title sponsor, Eve Knutson with Knutson Chevrolet. She is always 100% behind KCYP and we appreciate her so, so much. Columbia Bank, they have always been our top 30 under 40 sponsor and yet again this year they came up big. And Idaho Central Credit Union for their incredible contribution as well. Thank you to our very, very special sponsors. 2020, was a year of some darkness, but through that darkness shone some very bright lights. Our community was rich with bright lights who stepped up to do big things for our community, for their neighbors, for people in need, and over 150 of them were nominated for this year's Top 30 Under 40 Awards. Our esteemed panel of five judges sorted through those nominations to come up with 30 that will be highlighted here tonight. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce the Top 30 Under 40 Awards. My name is Morgan Dixon. I am the current community lead for Shared Curiosity at the Innovation Collective Den, downtown Coeur d'Alene. Um, I started my first business when I was 16, and it's called Out Loud LLC. I developed an app that takes a photo of an article of text and digitizes the work, and then prints it out loud um, in a special font that's easier for dyslexic students to read or reads it out loud, hence the name. I also started a 501c3 nonprofit called Imagination Initiative that takes used mobile devices, iPads, laptops, desktops, and then redistributes them to low-income students for at-home or educational uses. The best business advice that I have gotten would definitely be just keep going. Even if you fail, just keep going. There is no reason to stop doing what you're doing and everything's a learning experience. You cut yourself next time you know not to touch the blade. Just keep powering through everything and eventually you'll become super successful if you put enough energy into it. The community gave me a lot. They helped me with everything that I did. And so I want to return the favor. It's just a one for one. You help me, I want to help you. Um, that's why I'm helping my friend who's 16 years old start her first business. There's people like me who were helping me when I was 16. And so I want to do the same for those um, who have a develop, who, who want to start a business and change their lives. I want to be that person that somebody was for me. I want to thank my mom uh, for sure. She inspired me to change the world. My dad, same thing. We're all working hard to make our community a better place. Uh, I want to thank the Innovation Collective for giving me the opportunity to meet all these amazing people that I do and changing their lives. Uh, my name is Vanessa Mose, the Director of Charitable Giving at the Children's Village. I've been in the nonprofit sector for about 15 years now. Um, in college, I knew I wanted to serve others. So I found that 
volunteers were amazing and um, so selfless and working with the with nonprofits, and so that's why I chose to work in nonprofits. My work at the Children's Village has been really rewarding. It's been fun to see what nonprofit work is in a local community. I've always served a national organization, um, and so at the Children's Village, I love that the money stays local, and it gives me such pride to fundraise when I know the kids that I'm serving. Most people are surprised to know I was a rower in college. Um, so that has adapted to powerlifting and a lot of heavy weights. So I think most people would be pretty surprised to know that. <laughs> I love Coeur d'Alene so much, it's hard to say. But what really excites me is that it's a big enough town, but small. You know, I have been so well embraced by this town. I'm so honored to be here. I also am honored to have the privilege to raise my kids here. I think. If everybody had this way of life, our world would be better, <laughs> period. Thank you to my husband for supporting me in my crazy career. You know, there's been days over the last 15 years that I've worked 80, 90 hours, and he's always there cheering me on. Even though they're, the days are hard and long with the kids, I appreciate him so much. Hi, I'm Dr. Silikoski, Jenna Silikoski. I am a board certified family physician and I own the medical practice North Idaho Direct Primary Care. So I wanted to be a vet um, part of the time or an actress part of the time. I didn't know I wanted to be a doctor until I was in college. I love people very, very much. I'm a people person and I was in the army for seven years um, and it was a very corporate practice. It was like corporate medical practice. Basically they, they modeled their um, system off of Kaiser Permanente um, and it was very quick paced, very uh, fluid, changing all the time and I decided that I didn't like medicine at that point which I didn't realize I didn't, it wasn't medicine that I didn't like, it was actually the system. So that's when I learned about direct care which is what I do now. So I get to spend a minimum of 30 or 45 minutes with patients. I text my patients, I email my patients. Um, I love having the time for people and feeling like my patients are my family. That's the best part of it. The greatest accomplishment that I want to see in the future will be direct care taking over the current medical system that we have. So someday, 15, 20 years from now, if you see my name and there's direct care practices across the US and we're saving billions in healthcare, just think back, that's gonna be my greatest accomplishment if I do that. It's an incredible honor. I couldn't believe that this happened and it never would have happened without my husband. He's an amazing person. I need to probably thank my patients because, and my employees at work because obviously none of this would have happened without all of them. Hi, I'm Melissa Quinn and I'm with Idaho Youth Ranch. Actually, I started out as a public health nurse, so that was my background in public health. And so I just enjoy being part of the community and um, seeing those families that struggle is kind of what brought me in to learn more about Idaho Youth Ranch and I started volunteering for them and putting on their events. Um, it was kind of something I'd like to do as a hobby in my free time and then it kind of just turned in five years later into a job and they talked me into getting on board with them and so that's what I do. So we lived in Hawaii for five years. Um, that's where my husband did his residency and that's where I started my public health career. And um, it was around 2009 we started for the state of Hawaii. I got to lead the team that started um, flu clinics. And so we established flu clinics in all the public schools in the entire state of Hawaii. And I was really excited because I was reading um, last week that that program that we started and the clinics that we created they're using today to run their um, COVID vaccination clinics and so it was really fun for me to see something that I developed so long ago was being used again. I would say my biggest thank you would be to my family who supported me especially with throwing events it takes up big chunks of time especially as you get close to the event and my family has just been without a doubt my biggest supporters and my cheerleaders and they will drop everything and pick up my kids from school for me or come tie ribbons on boxes or you know whatever I ask them to do they just drop everything and help me and support me. Hi my name is Carly Williams and I help hardworking people make food work for them. I'm the owner and operator of Feed Your Focus Nutritional Therapy here in Coeur d'Alene. 
Well, I love eating, so I also have to kind of love cooking. Uh, my family is very creative and artistic and musical, and I think I got that gene, but I express it through the medium of food. So uh, lately it's been charcuterie boards, I think I said that right. And uh, I love snowboarding, kayaking, hiking. I have like the best job in the world because people get to come in. We talk about everything. We talk about stress, life, everything. And oftentimes it comes down to these limiting beliefs and these thought patterns and so much more of the psychographic and psychology side of like, our feelings of worthiness and, you know, why we're doing the things that we're doing despite knowing better. My relationship with time has changed over time and I used to think I just, if I had a good enough plan for time, time would allow for my plan, but I know that's actually not true because nothing is guaranteed. So I treat my time differently and I know that I have work to do and I know that I have like purposeful, meaningful, life-changing work to, to implement. And, and so many things uh, come out of left field that I could never, it's not just like me forcing something into a box, it's me learning along the way and getting to connect with people. And the beauty comes from that. And so me getting up in the morning, I love, I'm motivated by variety, like the dynamic of what I get to do every day, and then probably the meaningfulness of what I get to do every day. And now we'll hear from one of our judges this year, Heather Wickman, Office Manager and Vice President of Pioneer Title. I felt like it was an honor to be asked to be a judge for um, top 30 under 40. After looking at some of the other judges um, in the past, there's been some incredible people that have done amazing things in our community. For me personally, I feel giving back to the community or giving back to whatever organization that you want to, whether it's um, any type of volunteerism is so important. And anytime you have that opportunity and you have the time, I feel like you should give it. You know, the, the five judges came in and we came in pretty prepared. And so that was nice. We got through it a lot quicker than we thought we would because there were so many applicants. I'm, it, it was a time consuming process to go through all of the applications, but it was, it was really rewarding to see how many young, amazing people we have in our community. Um, we were all really on the same page though when we came in as a group. And so it was easy to pick the top 30 in a timely manner. My biggest takeaway was some the age of some of the applicants. I was blown away by what they've done at such a young age in their career, what they're doing to help the community at large, and just their drive and ambition. It was just amazing to see it. There was a diverse group of, of applicants one of the things that I noticed was the number of applicants that were doing this on their own and it wasn't something that their employers were demanding them to go out and do or asking them to do. Um, the drive of some of the young individuals and what they're doing. Well, I wasn't familiar with top 30 under 40 before really going into this experience. It was It's kind of a newer thing and I was way out of my 40s before it, it um, came about. And I am just amazed by the talent we have in our, in our community and how blessed we are to have all of these young individuals who are so driven and so willing to give back. And Coeur d'Alene or Kootenai County has always been a standout in, in this type of endeavor. I, my biggest takeaway was I, I didn't know there was 160 applicants right around there. And out of all those applicants, and I feel like I know a lot of people in Kootenai County, but I knew of three of them. So it was very, very interesting to go through all of the applications, read about all these young individuals, what they're doing, how they are succeeding in their professions, how they're giving back, how they're spending their personal time. And I feel like I met 155 new people, although I haven't met them personally. So I look forward to meeting them in the future. And I just thank you for the opportunity. 
I think the, the five judges really had a great time together, although we had to do it by Zoom. Um, we came together, we made some great decisions, and it, and it was not easy. There was some just really, really incredible applicants out there, and narrowing it down to 30 was pretty tough. I'm Daryl Hartwick. I am the president and CEO of the Coeur d'Alene Regional Chamber of Commerce. I moved here about a year ago. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. I was working as director of sales down at the Little Rock Regional Chamber. Um, saw this position come open in probably, I think, August of last year. Uh, just decided to throw in my resume and reach out, see how that would go. Went through the whole interview process, which was a couple months, and then ended up getting the job and starting December 2nd. I'm an avid skier. I go up every single weekend to Switzer, Silver, or whatever, whichever one uh, lookout is, is kind of open that weekend and what I'm looking to do. Uh, camping, obviously done a lot of that, and hiking since I've moved to the area. So anything really outside, I'm, I'm all about. My dad gave me some a couple great, you know, kind of one-liners that I use every day. Um, his biggest thing was pick up the paper. And so that's kind of a metaphor analogy for doing that extra when nobody else is looking. I think that's a, a huge thing for me. I was really glad that the community had seen the work that our chamber did over the past year and felt that it needed some recognition. Uh, so I was just proud of myself, proud of my team, you know, proud of what we did. Um, so that was, that was just what it was. It was just very much so, wow, this is great. I mean, I, I we should have six of these awards given out so I can give them out to my team as well because it's not just me. I mean, I need to give out one of these awards to each of them as well. So it was just very proud and, and it made me go, okay, well, that's great. It's time to work even harder type. That's, that's what made, it was like, okay, that, that shows what we're doing is working. Let's, let's continue to do it and do better than we're already doing every day. My name is Jessica Ball. I am an associate at Thrivent. We are holistic financial advisors helping people planning for retirement and protection for their family. I had a mother who was very involved in the community growing up and she was a part of a lot of different organizations. So I was always, every weekend we were volunteering at some different function. And so I just grew up with it and thought that was the norm. And in turn, um, as I got older and joined different organizations, I wanted to do the same as my mom did. I'm very involved with the organizations that I'm a part of. Um, so the Lady Delanes, um, KCYP, Rotary, and Toastmasters are the main organizations that I'm a part of and try to do as much as I can for them, which in turn turns into a lot of volunteering for different organizations that we're associated with for them. So one thing people would be surprised to learn about me if they don't already know this is that for a lot of volunteering, I dress up as a gorilla and do different things such as bike rides, um, anything I can do to raise money. I'm also the um, non-official spokesperson of my local Rotary for that, and it's JB the Gorilla. I would get naked so every single person had access to chocolate. I love chocolate. It is kind of a, like if I could be Willy Wonka, I totally would be, minus the Oompa Loompas because they're kind of weird, um, but I, I find joy in things and the idea of like when you get a piece of chocolate, like you automatically smile and to be able to give something like that to everybody, I think would be amazing. Um, I realize that some people don't like chocolate, but just that joy that you can get from receiving just like a small Hershey kiss um, can really brighten somebody's day. And I think sometimes that that's really all we need is just that little piece to get us through the day. I'm Jeremy Sells. I am retired from the army. I retired about two and a half years ago and I opened up a business called Honeydew Handyman. We do remodeling and light construction work. We like to volunteer and help the elderly in our community as well. I volunteer with a core group and a few other things. Core group is a young businessmen's group. It's uh, 45 and under men in the community. We give back to the community through multiple different ranges, but the big one we have is the locker, locker room project. And we've put a locker in every school in Coeur d'Alene, 271. The needy kids and the kids that do not have what they need to make it through school to be successful, we try to stock these lockers with stuff like that. Shoes, socks, underwear, clothes, coats, gloves, school supplies, backpacks, any of the things that a kid would need that they're not getting from home, 
to be successful in the classroom. It's very rewarding because some of the things that we do, I own a hand, the handyman business, so I've gone over to the children's village and installed dishwashers for them, you know, after work, stuff like that, that you don't even think that the need's out there. I wanna say thank you to Ryan Bones for nominating me. And then I would also like to thank my wife. You give me the ability to go out and volunteer in the community and do the things that I do. So I thank you for that. So my name is Janie Ortega and I'm a teacher at River City Middle School. Um, I teach 8th graders and 7th graders social studies and English. I got into my field just because I love kids and I like making an impact in our community and I think that's kind of the best way to do it um, is by being a teacher. So my um, students, so I run the Associated Student Body, the ASB, at my school. And um, so with those kids, we decided we wanted to do something. We do a kindness challenge every year. And so, you know, we would encourage kids to be kind, be nice, open a door for someone. And um, I had this group of kids that was like, you know, that's nice, but it's not kind. And so we started, um, I actually got the idea from our SRO, who was like, hey, we should partner with Make-A-Wish. And so we did. Um, we partnered with Make-A-Wish and we've done two years. Hopefully we'll get to do something this year. Um, and we've raised over $7,000 and granted three wishes. And that's all down to the kids. I just direct them. And so it's been really, really cool um, to be able to raise money. And we actually got to have our wish kid come to our event this year. And so that was so cool because we got to meet him and see uh, the impact it had. <laughs> the worst advice I've ever been given um, would probably be, they always say to teachers, you know, hey, don't smile until Christmas. Like that's, <laughs> you don't want them to know that you're not ni or you're nice. And I would like to thank um, my mom. She's just a, an outstanding role model for me and it's just always put me first and made so that I can be who I am today um, and then just my, my co-workers and the people I work with um, my principal Andy Price and Emily Wells and all of um, the people who have really helped me become a great teacher so Nancy Hicks and Donna Shove and Kevin Hout um, Donna Negroni all the people that I just love to work with every day um, and I'm just so lucky that I get to be a part of this profession. I'm Alexia Jordan. I'm the general manager at the North Idaho State Fair, home of the Gym State Stampede, and we are uh, responsible for producing our annual fair for Kootenai County. My mother was a fair manager in a different county, and I watched her for 16 years in that career and helped her along with whatever project she might have had, and it really led me to where I wanted to be in my career. And I love the fair. I've always been a fair junkie. I grew up in, in uh, Bonner County at the fair, and so, uh, it's a lot of moving pieces and parts when you're putting it together. And to watch all of those fall in place and see everybody enjoying what, what you have created is so beautiful. I was raised that being a part of our community and trying to find ways to give back and always give more than you take. So uh, truly it's, it's the way my parents raised me and we were involved in all sorts of things. And the message was always give more than you receive. If I could thank some people for, for uh, helping me get to where I am, number one is my mom, uh, who I miss dearly, and she, she instilled so much in, who, in me for who I am. And then I've got an incredible board that is so supportive and, and cheerleads for me along the way, and um, I'm so grateful for them having my back through the good times and the bad times and, and making the fair what it is today. We'll be hearing from Eve Knutson of Knutson Chevrolet, our title sponsor for this evening. Well, here we are again, celebrating yet another Elevate of the Kootenai County Young Professionals. Can't tell you how happy and thrilled I am to be here again to honor the class of Kootenai County Young Professionals this year that are gonna receive the Top 30 Under 40 Award. You know, this year we have a lot of winners who this will be their first year receiving this honor of distinction for their professional and achievements and contributions to our community. And we'll even honor a couple of you who have received the award once before. And I'm particularly excited about that group because once they received it the first time, they didn't just stop what they were doing. They found new ways to keep contributing to our community and earn the award yet again. They joined the ranks of people like Luke Malik, who was uh, serving as a legislature and working for Heritage Health 
while building a successful law practice. And Erin Elliott, the dentist in Post Falls, who made sure that children in the Post Falls School District didn't go without fluoride for their teeth while she was working professionally on creating a device that helped save, I'm sure, countless marriages um, as helping to solve problems with snoring due to sleep apnea. So I am excited once again to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you keep asking me to come back. I wonder how long you're gonna continue to do it, but I hope it's for a few more years at least. You are the ones now that get to step forward and shape what this community looks like by stepping up to serve in government, serve in economic development, serve in healthcare, serve in education, all, and serve in quality of life all lifting up our community and the people who live here. So one of the things I found as I struggled sort of to balance the demands of work, of family and community is the more that I put in to community, the more the demands on my business were lessened. My business grew and flourished in proportion to how much I was investing in the community. So much so that now in the Knutson family, our employees, we all say, we, we believe we are making North Idaho the best place on earth to live, work, and raise a family. So I remember when I was starting out about it where you were, where you are right now, we had an organization then called the JC International, which was very similar to Kootenai County Young Professionals in that the members of that organization were about the same age and about the same place starting out in their careers. And I remember being in a JC and having other people in the community who were leading in the community come alongside me to help mentor me and in the early 90s, my father received uh, the Chamber, Coeur d'Alene Chamber of Commerce Citizen of the Year Award. And in his speech, he said these words, if the community asks you to volunteer say, or to serve, say yes. And if they don't, then volunteer. And those words have stuck with me and shaped me all of my life. So I have always tried to find ways to serve the community and make this a better place. And I hope now that I can help you find ways, find your path to service in the community. And if not me, there are others here who are willing to help mentor you and, and help you find your way to leadership in the community. I look at the judges who um, were impaneled tonight to help select the top 30 under 40 and I'm sure any one of them can help any of you find your way just by asking. They all have long histories of serving the North Idaho communities of Post Falls, Coeur d'Alene, Rathdrum, and Hayden. So again, I just wanna congratulate the 2020 class of Kootenai County Young Professionals Top 30 Under 40. And thank you once again for, for allowing me to be part of your celebration. Thanks, Eve. It is important to be involved in the communities that we work, live, and play in. And how about a round of applause for Knutson Chevrolet and their four years of continued support for both Elevate as well as Kootenai County Young Professionals. And now we're gonna take a five minute intermission. Grab a drink, fill it up if you've got it, grab a bite to eat, hang out if you're already comfortable. We've got some blooper reels coming your way. <laughs> For this fantastic evening, we'll be in your living rooms and we, oh God, that's weird. How much testing do you need out of me? Like, you just count to one, two, three, count to eight, 10, 12. It's not really in order. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore that one. And now what we'd like to do is play, no? No. And now what we'd like to do is play a video. Now what we'd like to do is show you. <laughs>
in our extreme level of what the hell are you <laughs> to make 2021 an amazing year. Throughout the the court of throughout the course of this evening event, <laughs> throughout this evening's event, we will be showcasing God. And now enjoy this next few moments of winners and their wonderful videos that I'm sure we'll really enjoy. You okay? ah! Can we just slowly run and then up? Woo! I got nice calves. <laughs> of our award winners this year through a project we like to call interviews. <laughs> it was there. Now it's gone. There we go. I found it. I can look up at the microphone and just talk at it. And see. We'd like to showcase the first five winners of this year's Top 30 Under 40 Award. Wow, thank you. God, every time. Wow, you people just get in my head. Wow, thank you, Eve. Thank you, Eve. Wow. 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 Thank you, Eve. That was cold. <laughs> Throughout the course of this evening tonight, <laughs> It is important to be involved. It is so important to be involved in our community, in your community. 30 under 40 winners, and we'll appreciate your celebration with us on that as well. Incredible to have that much support in this community. You can't crack up like that. And we'll enjoy and appreciate everything that you have to give us your attention. <laughs> Stop it. Thank you, Eve. Very mo very motivational speech. <laughs> You're so nice. Mm, 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 another, yeah. But, uh, mm, you know, the entire time. And... Thank you. My name is Ryan Eberlin and I'm the principal at Timberlake High School in Spirit Lake. I did wildland fire for, for nine summers on the St. Joe, but we traveled all over the country and some of my best friends still do that and some of my best memories are from Fight and Fire. I think that that job um, really helped me to become uh, a better leader because, you know, as a principal you're in charge of everybody's well-being. Um, and. Uh, on the fire line, those situations are pretty much a daily uh, occurrence. <laughs> that job gave me a lot of leadership skills, and plus you work with a large variety of people. I'm inspired by young adults, especially in 2020. I feel like they uh, were more resilient than me sometimes. You know, they were positive, happy to be in school. But yeah, when I think back through teaching and being an administrator, uh, I get there's times I get emotional because you share a lot of moments with kids that their parents might not even share with them because uh, they open up to you and you go through a lot. But I'm pretty, I'm really proud of all the kids that I've had in my life and a lot of them are still in my life whether it's through you know social media or helping babysit my own kids. So uh, you know I always tell the kids that graduate once you make it through here uh, I'll do anything for you. I, I'm a big believer that you're only as good as the people that you surround yourself with. And I've been super fortunate from where I grew up, my group of buddies, through what I do now, I just feel like I have the best group of individuals that a person could ask for. Hi, um, my name's Michaela. I work for Spolster Family Chiropractic and Focus. I'm a focus coordinator and focus coach. I work with children and adults with neurodevelopmental disabilities or challenges. Um, I work with anybody from learning or reading challenges all the way to people with uh, traumatic brain injury or um, other type of disabilities or issues. I hope people remember that I made them feel good and that I gave them love. Um, just, I hope they feel that love. <laughs> I did work for Special Olympics 
Um, I'm still working very hard to create different um, programs and opportunities for people with special needs to participate in outdoor sports and recreation. Um, we have a lot of things in the works for 2021. I wish that I could somehow, I don't know, spread more of what I've found in my job and my purpose and my life. I wish that I could share that with everybody. That sounds really corny, but I just wish that, I wish that everybody could have like a purpose driven life and not just a have to life. If, you know, I wish that everybody could have that. Thank you, Dr. Amy and David. Um, you guys literally have changed my life. Um, and thank you to anyone else and everyone else, um, or everyone else, I should say not anyone else, everyone else um, who have just been here for me for the last four years, because this has been crazy. And the fact that I'm sitting here doing this is just like so cool and unbelievable. My name is Jessica Mihiran. I am a community member of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. A uh, couple things that I do right now presently is that I am an outreach coordinator for the North Idaho Pride Alliance. Uh, so I kind of do a little bit of everything, but I do a lot to work with volunteers and partners to help advance the mission of inclusion in North Idaho. I also am the founder and board president of the Civic Engagement Alliance, which I did uh, get formalized in 2020. And what we do is we encourage active participation in both civic and community life, which could look like getting out the vote or what we're doing now is we're organizing a community kindness cards project. Uh, so I'm just someone who loves to be involved in the community and advocate for good causes. The advice that I would give about success is don't let anyone define what success is and that it can mean things to very different people. And I feel, feel like there's two things that are important is that you have meaningful work and that you have good people in your life. And if you have those two things, you are successful. My name is Derek Labors, and what I do, I am a musician for Royale. I'm a real estate agent for Keller Williams Realty, and I am the co-president of the North Idaho 49er Faithful. I'm going to be writing music this year, going to be doing a lot more originals this year, um, going to be working hard in real estate and trying to rebound from 2020. Um, we're going to try to, we're going to have, bounce back live after five and get our crowd back and get the community back into that because that's another philanthropic organization that really does a lot for the community and does a lot for other charities. After, after 2020, looking at 2021 as a year of growth and uh, opportunity, and uh, that goes along with, with all my professions, whatever I do. Also with my group, the North Idaho 49 Faithful, um, we're gonna be doing a lot of philanthropy over the, over the summer and doing more charity, charity work. I mean, we've done things from delivering presents to veterans. Uh, we worked with Humane Society. We worked with uh, Children's Village. Thank yous obviously would be to uh, all my boys in Royale. Um, it's been an honor to share music and the love of music and everything with this community as well as Tyler Davis with Live After Five. And uh, most importantly, my, my group, North Idaho 49er Faithful. We had a great year um, charity wise and, and we've been giving back to the community, Chad, Josh, Nick, Ricky, love all you guys, Diana. Um, I mean, my whole group, it's just been such a, a great experience over the last five years growing. We have families growing up in this group now and um, such a big part of my life and love you all. My name is David Atkins. I'm the clinic medical director at the Coeur d'Alene Clinic for Heritage Health. Um, I'm over the primary care, psychiatry, and street medicine programs. I started in pharmaceutical research, but realized I could never be the guy in a lab coat pipetting all day, and uh, became a mental health counselor, and um, felt like medication management wasn't done well oftentimes, and uh, actually became a barrier to treatment. And so I ended up getting my physician assistant degree so that I could um, morph into a medical provider and and uh, start addressing that in a little more, as I saw it, helpful manner. I think people would be surprised that uh, I actually paid most of my way through college playing the piano. 
Um, I hardly touch it at all at this point, but um, that was <laughs> a passion at one point. And I still enjoy playing, and just it's hard to find the time. My approach to medicine really is that you can't have physical health without mental health and vice versa. And so that's kind of been my, really from the beginning is recognizing that if you don't address the, the mental health of somebody, their physical health will suffer. And our current health system does like to silo things up where you're referred out for everything and being able to integrate behavioral health as much as possible. Um, there's a lot of potential in this, in this community. I think there's a, a lot of up and comers and a lot of people that will you know, do big things and uh, it makes it a great place to raise a family and um, you know, settle down long-term. In particular, I'd want to thank my wife, Joan, just for sticking with me through too many to count. So many moves and so many job shifts over the last 10, 15 years. Um, yeah, I just appreciate the support. Even like I said, even Grangeville, Idaho and mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> had a son born there. So it's um, that'd be the biggest thing. Just uh, appreciate my wife standing by me as we uh, made this haphazard journey through my career. And next, we're gonna hear from our keynote speaker for this evening, Matthias Barker. Matthias is a psychotherapist from Spokane, Washington, where he lives with his wife and daughter. He holds a private counseling practice and utilizes evidence-based practices in his clinical work with adults, children, and couples from all walks of life and specializes in treating PTSD, ADHD, anxiety, and marital issues. Matthias' goal is to help the people he works with to move forward with health and what is meaningful in life amidst hardship. Welcome, Matthias Barker. Hello, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. My name is Matthias, I'm a psychotherapist um, in Spokane, Washington. I have the unique opportunity to kind of observe how this pandemic and just this season of life has been uniquely impacting lots of different kinds of people and uh, uncertainty seems to be the theme that we're all wrestling with, that we're all kind of combating and trying to understand what are the things that we can control, that we can't control, how do we respond to those things in ways that are good and then bring about flourishing. And what I want to talk about today is maybe the ways that we can respond to those things that almost are certain to make it worse. <laughs> and because I, I don't know your situation, maybe you're, um, maybe you're a business owner right now and you're really struggling and, and maybe this whole pandemic has really thrown you for a loop and you're trying to adapt and you're trying to change things you're trying to make sure that you can maybe shift your business model in the ways that make sense but if you're being honest like you've been as ingenuitive as you know how to be and things are still struggling maybe uh maybe you like a lot of my friends who are business owners a lot of my clients who own businesses haven't been taking a paycheck in a while and uh and it's getting hard you're trying to keep that one person on staff that keeps the keeps the lights on, your store manager, your um, your chef, whatever. Maybe you've uh, maybe you've taken a part-time job, or you're pulling out of savings and, and you're trying to have a good attitude about it, but, but it's bothering you. And it's uh, kind of humbling to be in a position where you were doing well just like a year ago, just a few months ago, and now things are really struggling. Maybe your career looks totally different, you know, so maybe you had a five-year plan and, and you thought everything was going great and everything was going great, but then all this hit and, and it's just a big mystery about what you're going to do next. Maybe your whole skill set was built around a career that wasn't like COVID friendly. Like I, I have a good friend who's spent his whole career um, becoming really good at throwing live events and, and providing sound equipment for live events. And so you can imagine uh, what he's thinking right now. Maybe your kids are in a version of online school and, and they're struggling. Kind of that hybrid program going back and forth. I, my brother's a band teacher and I was calling him a couple of months ago, just like, hey, how are things going? How are you adapting? And he, was, he told me like, what do you think? Like, <laughs> I teach band to middle schoolers over Zoom. Like, how do you think things are going? And it was hard. Um, He's, he's having people drop out of his program pretty frequently. And he's like, I don't even know if I'll have a band program in a few years. And, and, and no wonder, right? Like, think being a kid sitting there like at your kitchen table in front of a computer for hours on end, just doing like math workbooks. Like if you were in that situation, you wouldn't be much happier. Like, and maybe you're trying to convince your kids that it's important to stay focused. You're trying to like impress upon them the importance of keeping their grades up. But they're just sitting there with no friends, no nothing. And, 
And they're having a hard time just staying motivated, like just caring about any of this. And uh, you understand, but you see the future, you see what's coming ahead, so you know that they need to focus, even though it's hard. A lot of uncertainty. There's, th there's ways to make it worse. There's ways to make this worse. I wanna talk about in two domains. Um, you know, it's important to delineate what we can control and what we can't control, and then to not sink into kind of this false pseudo positivity, like everything's gonna be fine. If we just keep chugging along, things will turn out okay. And, and that feels good for just a moment, but it's not like, I don't know, we, we can feel it in our gut that that's not actually good advice because things might not. And, and it's, uh, it doesn't take long reflection to realize that the things that are stressing us out right now, the things that are really bothering us are tied to things that matter to us. They're tied to things we care about. And so when someone says, you know, just stay positive, don't worry about it, just don't think about it, like just keep moving along. It's like, it's like they're asking us not to care about the things that matter to us. And like, you could just think just for a moment, like what would you have to not care about right now to not be stressed out? What would you have to not care about right now to not feel the weight of how this whole pandemic, how this whole season of life is affecting us uniquely? Like, you're gonna not care about your marriage? Like that's, that's the reason this distance or this frustration or how this season of life is uniquely putting pressure on the both of you is, it's because it matters, that's why it's bothering you. The distance, the um, feeling far away, the lack of intimacy, the arguments, the criticism, it's, it's bothering us because it matters. Our kids, our kids having a hard time in school, the reason we're so motivated to keep them engaged is because they matter. Our business, this was our dream for some of us, like, it's, it's not as simple as, ah, we could find something else, ah, we're, we'll adapt. It's like, no, I had a vision. I, I, I've been dreaming about this for years. I've been, the sacrifices that I've made to get to this point mattered. And so trying to pretend like they don't matter isn't comforting. It just makes us feel kind of far away from ourselves. And so that, that can't be the solution. Just some forced positivity around just pretending like things are okay. You know, and it's important to delineate, like I said, what we can control and what we can't control, because what'll also happen is we'll try to like exert this anxious, like, you know, trying to, trying to exert this anxious control over the things that we know that we can't. And, and what happens is that it actually makes the catastrophes that we're worried about more likely. Like, uh, if, I work with people with like severe OCD and severe anxiety. And if you work with someone that has like a fear of phobias, uh, or sorry, <laughs> fear of uh, germs, has a phobia of germs, they'll wash their hands like, you know, a dozen times a day, sometimes several dozen times a day. And that's not even including the hand sanitizer, right? So like sometimes hundreds of times a day. And, and you'll notice if you do that, that your hands will start to really dry out the alcohol from the hand sanitizer, the, the sulfates from the soap. Even if you use like a lot of really good moisturizer, it's your hands will start to crack. And uh, I had a colleague with a client where the hand got so bad that it started bleeding and cracking and had just open sores on their knuckles and then they got an infection. And it's like uh, the thing you were doing to try to run away from the catastrophe of getting sick made you sick. Hmm. Um, same thing for social anxiety. Uh, it's most obvious there, you know, if, if you work with someone with social anxiety, the first thing you'll notice is they don't make eye contact, right? They're looking down, they're looking at the ground, they're, when they're having a conversation with you, they're, they're, they don't know what to do with their hands, you know, so, and that's what's happening in their head. They're thinking like, what do I do with my hands? Like, stop, stop being stupid, you put your hands down and, and, and you're just, you're just rolling through their head and then maybe you're trying to have a conversation. You ask like, so what do you think? And, and they look up to you terrified because they weren't listening they were thinking about all the ways that they might come off awkward and they're trying to mitigate all those and they're ruminating over all the things that could go wrong in this conversation and it made it awkward. The thing they were trying to do to run away from the catastrophe brought about the catastrophe. What are you doing that's bringing about the catastrophe? And how you're responding to all this uncertainty and how you're responding to everything that's not as it should be. What are you doing? And it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to tell, right? Like, as I say that, you might be thinking like, well, crap, I don't know. Like, cause it's the water we're swimming in, right? Like, we don't know 
what we're doing that's anxiously trying to attach to things. Like you might not know that the pressure that you're putting on your child to do well in school right now might be stressing them out. And that stress might be actually contributing to the grades that they're getting and the lack of motivation, the lack of confidence they have that they can do it. Maybe the same thing in your marriage where, you know, the, the efforts that you're trying to put in to try to get some appreciation, to try to get some recognition, to try to, you know, tell them, hey, I'm not getting the affection that I need to feel invested in this relationship. That criticism might be contributing to the distance you're feeling. And in your job, maybe it's like this rumination, you might've been thinking like, okay, I gotta make all these contingency plans for all these different ways that this could be going wrong. So if we, you know, if we're at full capacity, if we open back up in the summer, if we open back up maybe fall, maybe in a few months, like you're thinking through, you're, you're making spreadsheets, trying to figure out all the different combinations and ways that this could, you know, go down and, and depending on how much revenue comes in, how many more people you can bring on, you're just thinking through all this, but you're burning yourself out. Like you're not sleeping. You're just trying to feel busy, trying to feel productive, but you know, if you really sat down, you're not being productive. And then when things do open up, you're going to be burnt out. And the opposite of creativity is anxious stress. So if you're really trying to hustle, if you're really trying to be ingenuitive, leaning into this anxious stress over things you can't control, like the future. And isn't it? So what do we do to kind of discover these um, spaces where we're either avoiding the things that we can control or trying to exert anxious like control over the things that we can't. Um, you might need to talk to someone you trust, a friend, a mentor, a boss, um, a counselor, because oftentimes it's hard for us to see it, right? Ask some questions like, hey, this is kind of my situation. This is my landscape. This is what I'm trying to wrestle with. Can you see ways that I'm acting that is actually, I don't know, um, creating catastrophes that that is maybe creating some of the stress. And that takes a lot of humility to just ask a question like that. And maybe you're not used to asking questions like that, but but growth, like, that's a team sport. It's not, it's not a single person sport. It's even like reading a self-help book. Like, it's not just self-help. Like, the person who wrote the book is helping you. <laughs> like, maybe you're applying it, and it needs that personal ownership, but, but we grow in community. We grow with other people. Um, we grow alongside of people that we respect and that we trust and that we care about and opening ourselves up, even in those vulnerable spaces, might be a great first step. Another good step could be journaling. Just writing out, like if, if you're taking notes right now, like you could even, uh, you know, kind of put in the journal two columns. You could put what I can control, what I can't control, right? And then just list, you know, underneath, just have a time of just writing out and some reflection, like what are the things that are stressing me out in domains that I can control? What are the things that are causing me distress in the places that I can't control? What am I doing to try to get control over the things I can't control? What are the ways that I'm avoiding things that I can? Right, so you're mapping it out. You're trying to actually get it on paper because sometimes these stresses and these ideas kind of feel like a swarm of bees around our head, but if we can just lay them down and set them side by side, it's. It turns out it was like six bees instead of the whole swarm that we thought it was. And, and so you're laying it down and then you could even just think like, what are the things that are causing me distress and how do those things tell me or give me signals about what matters to me? And maybe here's the last thing that we can close with is, there's an important shift that needs to take place in, in the domain of things that you can't control from from anxiety into grief. Because it sucks that there's some things that are just going wrong right now and you can't change. It sucks that there's things in the future that are coming that you can't see. And, and you can try to make all these contingencies and ruminate, or you can transition that into just honestly holding it out in front of you and just grieving it. This is hard. I'm not going to avoid it. I'm not going to try to fix it. I'm not going to try to cheer myself up about it. I'm just going to hold it. Because grief is a form of acceptance. And, uh, and you need to be in a space of acceptance 
of groundedness in order to take on what comes your way. That's the best version of you, to take whatever in the future that you can't handle, whatever in the future that you don't know how to encounter or, or, or work with, you need to be grounded. You need to be focused. And that means that you have to be able to grieve and accept the things that you can't control right now. That's the best version of you right now. And maybe that could be done with the help of a counselor, with a friend, like I said, with someone else, because I can say that and it could feel good right now, but, but there's actually some legwork to letting that sink in. Thanks for letting me be here with you today. I'm, I'm happy to talk with you. I wish you well. My name is Nikki Parquette, and I'm a PA at Spear Direct Care. It's a, a direct primary care clinic in Hayden. And so basically we just do things a little different when it comes to the pay model. And so instead of doing a traditional insurance, uh, I don't rely on reimbursements from insurance. I have a membership fee. So I have a contract directly with the patients. And so I work for the patient. But it's really nice to be able to spend the majority of the time with my patients, be able to be there for them and whenever they need it, and be able to just take care of them. That's the best part. I originally got into healthcare because there was a need. And so there was a need uh, in the military. There was a, a, there was a news story about how service members were dying on the battlefield. It was about four years into the Afghanistan war. Um, and it's because they didn't have access to care. There wasn't enough combat medics. And um, the medics just were burnt out and they weren't, they weren't joining and they were the ones that were in were getting out and they were just kind of done. And so I thought, well, I can do that. And so I enlisted. My true purpose is to support and serve the people who support and serve us. And so from the beginning of my medical career, that's always been my goal. My name is Marin Meyer. I'm a business banking officer at STCU. I've been in banking for over 15 years. My first job in banking was being hired on by my friend's dad, who was the president of a local bank. So I learned early on that it's all about the value of connections. I am uh, really involved with CDA 2030. Um, it's an organization that I've been a part of for three years now. Um, I'm on the board, um, slated to be the chair, you know, next year. So um, that is a pretty strong pull uh, to how I want to contribute to my community through CDA 2030. Um, like the Excel Foundation, I'm on that board as well, uh, just because I really, really believe in the school district and, and supporting our teachers. Um, I'm a Rotarian. So I really enjoy what the mission of Rotary is, service above self. See, I would not be able to do half of what I do without having the support of an amazing company um, who shares that vision and mission of supporting our community. Um, my family for supporting me in all of my time away from home. And then, yeah, I mean, my friends that are just, uh, you know, why I'm out in the community doing what I do because I, you make really great relationships and connections, so thankful for that. My name is Tessa Gillett, and I am a program advisor for Lewis Clark State College in Coeur d'Alene. I advise nursing students, and I'm also an adjunct faculty member at the college, and I teach classes in nonprofit fundraising and nonprofit grant writing. I'm definitely motivated by others. I love helping people, whether it's something really simple like giving directions or whether it's helping them choose a degree track, helping them through a tough time in college. I'm really motivated by being able to help others. Just wrapped up four years on the board at Emerge Coeur d'Alene, which is an arts nonprofit. Um, I had actually resigned from the board back in September, but they were in the building that burned down in downtown Coeur d'Alene in January. And so after the fire, there was a need for grant writing and fundraising because we needed to find a new space. And so I came back onto the board for um, the spring and the summer to help with grant writing. And I'm also the chair of the City of Coeur d'Alene Pedestrian and Bicycle Advisory Committee. When I'm not working, I like to be outdoors. I like walking my dogs, but I also enjoy hiking and backpacking, camping. 
When I was a kid, I wanted to be a figure skater and a zookeeper. Preferably at the same time, but I don't know how that would have worked. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank my coworker, Stephanie Vickhammer, who nominated me. That alone was a really great surprise, and I just appreciate that you thought so highly of me to even nominate me for this award. And I'd also like to thank my family, who has always supported me in life no matter what I've done, and it's why I'm here today. My name is Octavian Rivas. I am uh, a business development officer for Idaho Central Credit Union. Uh, we do all kinds of different things. So uh, monetarily, we'll give back to the community at different events, uh, different fundraisers for nonprofits. Uh, we'll also do financial education in different schools, um, which I think gives some of the best joy for me is being able to interact with the youth and um, you know try to help um, you know, create next, uh, the next leaders um, in our community, so. When I was growing up, I actually wanted to uh, be a firefighter, like probably most little, little boys and girls. Um, and I had the opportunity um, out of college to volunteer as a firefighter. So um, for a couple of years, I was a volunteer firefighter with Kootenai County Fire and Rescue uh, in Post Falls. And um, I also uh, was a wildland firefighter out of Spokane um, and got to experience that for a couple of years as well. Adapt to change is, is definitely um, probably some of the best advice that I've um, gotten. You know, especially in our line of work, things can change in an instant and um, you really have to just be open and, and um, willing to experience the change and, and just roll with it. Um, just to you know, see that you know, what I'm doing is impacting our community and um, you know, giving back, I think that that's one thing that's most important. And um, again, just humbled and, and honored to, uh, to see that. I'm Matt Haig, I work at Mountain West Bank. Uh, as a mortgage lender. I got in that field of work to just help people find their first home, second homes, just kind of just kind of working with people, helping them get into what they want to do. I had in about an 80 a little 80 something year old woman that uh, moved up here and just had everything shipped from California and couldn't uh, move it herself. It was in a storage unit. So me and a few guys uh, moved it into her new home once uh, she got closed. And, and so that, that was quite the adventure. I am part of the core group um, and also part of the Excel Foundation. And the core group is, is founded on kind of a sweat equity um, instead of writing checks all the time. Uh, we do things as far as uh, we had a, a group of guys that if elders or people that couldn't get out of the house for COVID, we would go grocery shopping for them, um, um, volunteer for the kettlebell ringing, um, things of that nature. First off, like to thank, you know, uh, my parents and, and uh, family for always supporting me. Um, same with my occupation I think uh, I get a lot of support within the within the occupation and and also a lot of support from the groups that I'm in that's a great group group of guys that uh, that we all support each other and and help each other out as we as we go throughout tonight's event we've heard a little bit about KCYP but why is KCYP important to this community When I first joined the organization, I didn't know anybody in this town, didn't have any friends, and I really joined to get myself out of my comfort zone and learn to meet new people. And over the past two years, I've made um, some really great relationships. And I think that that's really my biggest motivator to keep it going, is to be able to give the same opportunities to other people that I had when I first joined. KCYP literally taught me how to speak to people um, on stages, in any sort of public networking type environment and I would like sweat and cry before that. I was asked to serve on the board at a time when I didn't have nearly as many professional skills outside of my career that I wanted and so it just provided a massive opportunity for growth in my life and that's exactly what I got out of it. I think KCYP is one of the few organizations that we have left in the area that 
still has a true focus on charity, but uh, it's unique in the way that it wants to develop the younger professionals. It wants to connect them and wants to give them a network. KCYP has played an integral role in making sure that professionals who move here and they're starting new careers have a social group of people that are similarly interested in, in making sure that there's a social fabric and, and, and group of people that they can rely on to help make this community the great place that it is. I advocate for KCYP because there's a lot of people in this community that are out doing really great things. And I think oftentimes they get trapped in the sense of what am I doing for the community and could I be doing more? And an organization like Cooney County Young Professionals brings people of like minds together and gives them the opportunity to work together on a common goal. And um, it's important in, an or in a community like North Idaho to have that because we're such a diverse region of individuals. I think oftentimes we just you know, forget that there's a lot of great talent in this area and having this organization really brings to light a lot of really great talent that we have. To me, KCYP means giving people of all walks of life the same opportunity to be able to learn and grow personally and professionally, but to also get connected and plugged in with different community organizations. I can definitely say I was a truly different person when before I started than where I am now. It taught me how to lead. It taught me uh, how to be a team player. And these are things I use each and every day. I'd encourage others to join KCYP, not only because of what they can gain from it, because I think they can gain a lot of great relationships and professional relationships that'll help them down the line. But really they're contributing to the community by, by helping others get connected in the community. I just want to say to anyone who's still on the fence about joining, absolutely do. Because if you're looking to take the next step in your career or you want to stand out among your peers, uh, among the people that you work with in your company, this is the answer. This is just that next tool that you need in your toolkit. And the, the personal connections you're going to make and the business um, and personal development is absolutely irreplaceable. KCYP obviously holds a very close place in my heart and, and I think it is an integral part of the community, of the fabric of our future. I'm Tabitha Kroc and I am the Executive Director for the North Idaho Centennial Trail Foundation, which is 23 miles from uh, Higgins Point all the way to state line. And what I do is anything from raising funds, donor relations, working with the community, educating the community on what the trail does, um, along with that fundraisers, Coeur d'Alene Marathon, the Coeur d'Alene Fondo, Isles for the Trail, so we do some events during the year to raise money. A lot of people don't realize that the trail is fully funded as a nonprofit. We don't get full state funding, government funding. Uh, we do have a supportive community. Uh, the Coot or the yeah, Kootenai County, Post Falls, Coeur d'Alene, we all kind of work together to uh, make the trail wonderful. So I uh, do a little bit of everything. Um, I am really passionate about uh, police officers and firefighters. My mom's a police officer here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, so I've been a part of the um, fundraiser for the Kootenai County Police Fire Memorial Foundation and have been part of that fundraiser for years um, where it's a bike ride. I also give my time and energy to that uh, nonprofit as well. I'm huge into children as well and I, um, I've been a part of the Children's Village, Boys and Girls Club um, to help our community. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that um, nominated me, um, the judges for uh, choosing me to be a recipient, but most of all to my friends and family. I honestly couldn't be the person I am today without them. I'm Jennifer Drake, owner of the Crown and Thistle Pub. So I grew up here and uh, as soon as I hit college age, I figured I was leaving and never coming back. Um, and when I moved away, I went to Scotland uh, to study at university there and absolutely fell in love with pub culture. Just spent so much time in pubs studying, just hanging out with friends, uh, just truly absorbing every moment that I was there as much as I could. Uh, and then when I ended up moving back to Coeur d'Alene about 13 years ago, uh, I looked around, I said, you know what, Coeur d'Alene needs a pub. A lot of the volunteer work I've been doing um, 
has been directed to our kids' uh, elementary school. They go to Sorensen Magnet School. And all three of them are na there now for two years. I have all three kids at one school. Um, and so we do a lot to help them out in, in school fundraisers and, and auctions and things like that. I think a lot of people are naturally afraid of failure. It's a very human thing to be afraid of failure. Um, and to just maybe not have the confidence in yourself because you're afraid of failing. Uh, but I truly think that most people would be surprised to see what they're capable of if they just be truly believe in themselves, believe what they're capable of. And yeah, failure happens sometimes, but that's part of life. I mean, failure is good because you learn from it. I mean, unless you're skydiving, I guess you don't really want to fail at skydiving, but you have to be able to deal with failure as part of your growth process. And and to me, once I got over that, um, I it was kind of amazing to see what was possible once you actually right, get out there, put yourself out there, don't let the bastards grind you down. Just believe in what you're doing and what whatever your concept is, whatever your passion is, whatever your path is, be confident that you're taking the right one and just go at it. Go at it with gusto. I'm Katherine Hoyer. I'm the public information officer for Panhandle Health District. I actually started um, in college as a journalism major, um, but I switched to PR after a year in journalism, uh, finding that I wasn't great <laughs> at journalism, <laughs> but I thought I could make it in PR. Knowing what their mission was, and I really, I strongly believe in that mission. You know, I wanna help people who are underserved in our community, maybe don't have all the resources available to them. Uh, we can provide education. We're about prevention of disease. Um, we wanna kind of come together and help those health disparities and uh, bridge the gap that we see in our community as far as health care, um, environmental health, and, and other things, ways that we can help our community. I am involved in the Suicide Prevention Action Network. Um, that's been really cool to be involved in. We're all about awareness and prevention of suicide in North Idaho. Um, the group has been around for, I, th I think, over a decade now. So we put on a walk every year. Um, we usually do it down on Riverstone. And last year we probably had over 600 people come. So we hope to continue to grow that. I was super surprised to even know I was nominated. I still don't know who nominated me, but I want to find out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was surprised and humbled. And then reading through the list of winners, I was like, I'm not sure if I belong in this list, but, <laughs> but it was really sweet. I mean, it's been a tough year. So this was like a, a very bright spot for me. Hi, I'm Jody Babb and I am a domestic engineer, AKA stay at home mom, PE teacher, chauffeur and activities director. I um, also am probably the tutor at the house who this year I didn't know that I don't know anything about fractions, which became <laughs> quite a coincidence. Um, also with two active boys, making sure that they are still having their friendships and their sports and all sorts of fun activities to keep them you know, busy. So I'm involved in the Wine, Women and Shoes. I'm also a 4-H leader for the pig group for Northwest Rangers. And then I also help at the school, an organization that we I love to help, and it's the 4-H um, Livestock Leaders Boosters account. And that helps raise money for the kids that are at our local fair to get enough money to pay for their projects and then be able to use the money that they've earned to buy their livestock for the next year. So that auction is held every year at the Rosenberger Ranch, and it's just a fun event. And I would probably literally just want to be there and help them and support them. I want to thank my husband for pushing me to fill out the application and do this and my family for supporting me through all my endeavors and being there to you know give back to the community and helping me out so and my parents and everyone else my good friend Missy my co-leader Brianna to help me with my 4-H kids so everyone out there thank you. My name is Becca Seamers. I am a family medicine physician and a faculty physician at the Kootenai Clinic Coeur d'Alene Family Medicine Residency. So I see patients and then I also teach our resident physicians both in our clinic and in our hospital. I was one of those nerdy children that always wanted to be a physician. I uh, loved 
human pathophysiology and was interested in the human body from a young age. And so kind of always thought I was gonna be a doctor and that was my dream. Um, going through school and college and was fortunate to be able to, to see it through. Very motivated by taking the best care that I can for my patients and then a caveat of that is training our residents to take the best care of patients long term. Um, I love my job and it's an honor to take care of the families that I do and I, I'm always striving to do, to learn the most that I can and do the best that I can. So that pushes me every day to read more and look into things that I don't understand fully more. And then that spills off into teaching of residents and hopefully teaching them some of that clinical inquiry and inquisitiveness. I think there are a lot of incredible people in this community doing great things. And I was honored, uh, one of my patients actually told me that they nominated me. It's a family I take care of and I felt honored that they thought I deserve this award and felt very touched that um, out of all the applications that they had that I was felt to be a winner. It was very, it was very meaningful. I think by now we can agree that our community would not be the same without these individuals. But what is this award really about? The Top 30 Under 40 Award provides the community the ability to showcase and celebrate and recognize the hard work that the young professionals are doing. It's an opportunity for the community to really show um, that they support young professionals. Top 30 Under 40 provides to the community uh, an opportunity to showcase that we do have tremendous talent for businesses that are looking to move here, uh, for other community members to connect with one another once they see the tremendous things that other people are doing in this community. So uh, lots of different opportunities there. Top 30 Under 40 provides to our community this like platform and outlet for people to recognize and become more aware of like the emerging leaders in our community, the people that are out there that maybe aren't formally recognized. You always hear like the same people over and over and it provides this, like I said, platform for people to see new people and what they're doing in our community, which is really awesome. When we first um, considered bringing the Top 30 Under 40 Award back, the idea of it not elevating or adding anything to Case P wasn't really even a, a conversation. Um, admitting this award isn't to grow KCYP, it's just to provide the administration part of this crucial award for the community. While originally this award was ran by the Coeur d'Alene Press and the North Idaho Business Journal and it kind of discontinued in 2014 and the KCYP board in 2018 saw a need to bring back this award and to continue to recognize the amazing people in our community. Um, and it provides, they went above beyond that, not just giving them a plaque and saying congratulations, but in an evening where they can go and celebrate and remember a night um, and walk away from that and be amongst other people that are the same of them, but unique at the same time. So it's really, it's creating an awesome environment for these people in one evening. A top 30 under 40 winner to me is somebody who is day in and day out giving their best and their all to the community. And that's uh, in a multitude of ways, whether it be their professional career, what they're doing in their off hours. It's somebody who's not clocking out and being done, but clocking out for their day-to-day -day job or their um, own business, and then still choosing to go above and beyond for their community. A top 30 under 40 to me is somebody who just shows extraordinary ability in all aspects of their life, whether that be, you know, family, business, community, education, uh, so many different well-rounded aspects of a person. Um, you know, there's people on here who are firefighters, teachers, hospital workers, um, all different sorts of things, entrepreneurs. Um, you know, so it's just, it's a great opportunity to be well-rounded in the community and not just singularly focused on those who only volunteer or only are crushing it in business, that they're well-rounded people. The top 30 under 40 to me is the best and the brightest people in our community. Um, it's either emerging leaders, they're healthcare workers, they're professionals, um, they're educators, um, <laughs> all different types of professions, which is pretty neat to me, um, they're all different and they're all unique in their own way. 
and they elevate everybody through either their volunteer work or through their career work. I agreed to be a judge because I feel it's great to give back to our community. Um, Top 30 Under 40 is a great organization. It encourages other people in the community to aspire to be the best that they can be and, and hopefully encourage someone else. I would encourage, um, I, I think there was 100 some applications and they narrow it down to about 60, which it was really hard to, to select from those because there were so many talented people. And I, I would like to increase that. I would love to have 200 next year. And I would love to have those people that are nominated go out and nominate someone else. Because I think it's important once you're given something to give something back. I think it's important to highlight them because people need to know um, in our community what they're doing. And also it could encourage someone to, to start something similar or to help join them and make their organization or their cause better. People that have won, I encourage them to, to go out and maybe find someone um, that they can help mentor and bring up and encourage other people to, you know, if they have a passion or a dream to do something, to go after it and not let that hold that back. And, and so hopefully we can continue to have uh, more and more people nominated and uh, you know love their success and, and encourage them and help support them. Hi, my name is Daniel Connolly. I'm primarily a teacher at Summit Christian Academy. I teach the drama, speech, and music there. I'm also the student activities director. And I have a DJ business, DJ Connolly. I DJ lots of weddings and dances and parties. And I try to do lots of things to give back to my community. One thing is trying to find lots of ways to engage the youth in fun, wholesome activities. That's the reason why I started actually a swing dance group that uh, meets every week and we just get together and everybody has fun swing dancing. We do kind of old time big band swing, East Coast swing dancing. And we swing dance once a week and there's between anywhere in 40 to 200 people that come every week. So I try to do that. And then of course, acting and directing. Most of my acting and directing stuff is volunteer. And I try to give back to the community by creating art that they can enjoy that way. I really love the talent that this community has. Some people may not always realize it, but Coeur d'Alene has a ton of local talent, um, particularly in the performing arts, which is what I'm really into. I wanted to say a big thank you to my family. Really, family is oftentimes what makes people who they are. So my mom and my dad and all my brothers and sisters, everybody just supporting me and encouraging me, and especially my wife. My wife is my top fan and I couldn't love her more and be more thankful for all the support that she gives me in my life. My name is Scarlett Kelso. I'm a financial advisor with Morgan Stanley. As a financial advisor, my job is to help my clients identify, clarify, and set measurable goals. And then I am a certified financial planner, so I help them uh, figure out what needs to be done in order to achieve those goals. And then I guide them basically every step of the way um, as they transition from working into retirement. I am currently involved with uh, the Kootenai Health Foundation. Um, that's the biggest one that I, that I am working with um, and also Hospice of North Idaho. And then I just do some other volunteer activities on the side. But I, I volunteered for um, and have been on several boards over the years. And I have decided that the thing that I like the most is actually getting in and volunteering. And so I found that it, if I can free up my time by limiting the number of organizations that I am you know, on the board for or, or heavily committed to, then I can volunteer when opportunities come up for all different types of organizations. I would like to thank just everybody in my life, my family, um, for supporting me and, um, and and working with my crazy schedule. And then my friends, my friends have been um, my cheerleaders. They're always there to encourage me and celebrate me, and um, and I just couldn't do it without them. My name is Justin Cabal. I'm a battalion chief with Cooney County Fire and Rescue. So I manage four fire stations uh, within Post Falls, the outskirts of Coeur d'Alene. I'm a uh, fourth generation firefighter. So 
essentially my great grandfather was uh, the first paid fireman for in Cooney County. Uh, I helped with the Cooney County Police and Fire Memorial Foundation for a lot of years. Uh, I still do uh, some work with them. The uh, Jeff Welch Memorial Fund, Jeff Welch helped start Second Do Training, which was the training company. Uh, he passed away from cancer uh, a little over a year and a half ago. And so since then we have uh, made most of our trainings all, uh, all the money goes to the Jeff Welch Memorial Foundation to help any other firefighter or police officer that you know gets hurt or injured or disease or family needs help you know we can financially help them out it's a pretty cool honor uh you know i've seen this over the last couple of years you know go through and then when i got the email from i'm guessing one of my chiefs you so submitted it and uh that i was selected that's a pretty big honor and not just the things at the fire department i mean i take pride in I coach all my kids sports when I can, you know, I do a lot of other things. I own a training company, so we travel around and teach fire departments uh, that don't have the resources or logistics that, that we have. So getting to share the knowledge that I've gotten with them, you know, just so busy all the time that it's kind of a cool thing to be recognized for. I'm Tristan Height, and I work for Bank CDA as a commercial SBA lender. And I work with um, businesses of all sizes um, to help with any kind of lending needs that they may have. Oddly enough, I wanted to be a nurse. I used to volunteer as a candy striper at KMC um, and started my career in banking because the Bank of America offered tuition reimbursement for nursing. Um, then I found out that I can't handle needles and had to kind of shift <laughs> what I wanted to do with my life and found that through banking I had a unique ability to help people understand their finances and um, help them in a way that I wasn't able to do through nursing, I was able to do it through financial services. We've got a great little community, not to mention I love the events that we have, the support that we have for local charities is amazing and it's huge and I hope we never lose that. I would love to thank, I have a girl tribe of girlfriends, my Brittany Teverbaugh and Megan Morrison and all the other ladies in my life, Chelsea Napier, my mom and my dad for always believing in me, uh, my sister Angela Sullivan who's been my rock, my biggest supporter. She took me to my first volunteer event. Um, and then a lot of my bosses that I've had over the years and um, my kids and God, that's it. My name is Eva Minitri and I work at Bayshore Systems. This is our family company. You know, I wear at my work many hats as I'm sure all business owners do. And um, my main focus has been um, lately working on a culture of Bayshore Systems. We do annual fundraisers for various charities and uh, for the um, last several years we decided that we will let our employees uh, choose the charity. So last year we were working with United Gospel Mission and again we were planning to put the, uh, the fundraiser um, golf tournament for them which did not happen. Uh, we still donated uh, some portion of the funds to them even the, without uh, you know doing a fundraiser but we've been doing also uh, as a company several projects for them like uh, we uh, went for cleanup of a kids camp in um, Washington um, in June working there uh, just as volunteers and preparing the camp for the season because um, despite of all the uh, things happening, they were committed to open their kids' camp in July. I would like to thank uh, Gretchen Perry for submitting my name. I think that was her. I don't know directly, but it, it was her or uh, another lady from our company named Tess. Um, so I would like to thank Gretchen Perry and Tess. Well, we're in the home stretch this evening, folks. Thank you for sticking with us and joining us to begin with. My name is Jake Yates. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you. I'd like to invite back to the stage President and Vice President for KCYP, Dr. Ryan Bones and Darren Halliday. Stay classy. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> really jumped up on us. Wow. What an amazing event. We are so glad that you got to join us. And what an incredible group of young professionals who have done 
tremendous things for our community. I'm joined here to wrap up tonight's program with none other than KCYP's Vice President, Darren Halliday. Thank you, Ryan. We'd like to, again, give a very special thank you to the people who put in a lot of blood, sweat, and some tears to make tonight's event <laughs> possible. Namely, our Elevate co-chairs, Shane Salorza and Kayla Mai. We also have an incredible committee that joined them with Heather Twite, Caitlin Jones, Sydney Stinson, Dan Edwards, Ryan Bones, Ashley Yates, and Cassidy Bones. And Darren as well. <laughs> Our judges who selected the top 30 out of a massive amount of candidates put in a, also a lot of time and effort to go through those names, research, find out exactly what they've done for our community and pick those top 30. And so we have a sincere amount of appreciation for them as well. Rick Rasmussen, Kiki Miller, Jeanette Laster, Mark Wilson, and Heather Wickman. Thank you guys. And for this event to even be possible, we would love to once again thank our, our major sponsors. Thank you to our Elevate title sponsor, Knudsen Chevrolet. We'd also really like to thank Columbia Bank for the top 30 under 40 award sponsorship. And then we have a major sponsor, Idaho Central Credit Union. Thank you so much, all of you, for helping to make this event even possible. Absolutely, and we had a myriad of other businesses that came in and supported us when it counted the most to fill in what we needed to make tonight happen. And those are our supporters here. Wow, what a wonderful group of KCYP supporters. Thank you so much for everything you've done in this community and for supporting this event. We would like to invite you to join the mission that KCYP is on to elevate and lift up our young professionals of this county. We're gonna drop a link somewhere in the comments. Check it out and join us. Also, don't, rem don't remember, hey, hey, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, it's a thing. Come on, people, bring it back. <laughs> you're going to get platforms. Yeah, you're going to get updates uh, and be in the know as far as when the next events are and how you can be a contributor to this community as well. Absolutely, and together we can elevate 2021. Yes. Woo!